Hey, this is Waylon from Swift Windbows, and on this fine day, I am going to show you how I make buffalo horn tip overlays on my bows. Um, so before I go any further, I'll just talk a little bit about what a tip overlay is, what it does do, what it doesn't do, um, and my, why you might want to consider it. So a tip overlay is just simply uh, a piece of material that's glued onto the end of the bow um, to act as the string knock. You're going to carve the string groove into the overlay material as opposed to um, the the bow wood itself. And you typically use a harder, tougher material um, than the bow wood. So buffalo horn, deer antler, bone, um, some kind of hardwood. A lot of people like to use exotic hardwoods. Um, and it's there to take that load of, you know, the string off of the bow. Um, in my opinion, for hunting weight and target weight bows, um, tip overlays are almost always not really necessary. Um, Well-made self knocks um, will be plenty durable um, to do the job on most bow woods, on most bows. Um, so when I do tip overlays, I'm usually doing them more for uh, their aesthetic value. Um, I think they look nice, they provide some color contrast, um, and you can make them nice and sleek and thin. Um, and yes, they do um, do a good job of making a durable string knock. Um, but don't feel like you need to do it, even if you're working with a softer wood like you or um, hazel or something like that. Um, a well-made self-knock will do the job. But if you want to play around with some tip overlays, this is how I do it. So I'm going to start with this piece of buffalo horn. Um, it's not too hard to find. You can find them online. Um, I got this one at a pet store. Probably not the most economical way to buy it if you're planning on getting a lot of them, but if you just need um, one piece to mess around with. It's an easy way to get it. Um, so when I'm looking at this piece of horn, um, it's thin here on the on the bottom end of it. And as it gets out towards the tip, it gets thicker. It's probably starts being solid somewhere in here. Um, you can use all of this or most all of it um, for different styles of tip overlays. The thin stuff um, has its value too. So don't throw it away. Um, save it. You can use it for, for inlays or you can make certain styles of, of overlays that aren't built up as high. Um, so when I'm approaching this, I want to take um, about a two inch long section by a half an inch wide um, to make one overlay. And it needs to be, I need to be able to make it flat on the bottom. Um, so it can be a little tricky working with such a curved horn like this. Um, I'm just going to cut a section off here and see what I can get out of it. I'm trying not to be wasteful. So let's see what I can do. Okay, so I've got two rough pieces here. Um, I need to do some shaping to get a gluing surface and to get them basically into the shape that I want to. So I'll show you how I do that next. All right, so when you got pieces like this that are a little bit funny shaped, you need to kind of pick which side is gonna be what. Um, so my plan is to grind this part down here and make that the, f the flat surface. And I'm gonna have this part back here um, 
be the back end so I can have some height to it and this end's going to be tapering down so I'm going to be taking the, the bulk off the bottom here to make it flat and that should give me a pretty good piece to work with and I'm going to do something similar to this one where this is the, the inside of the curve I'm going to make that the flat part it's going to taper this part down to be more of a point and this part's going to stay pretty thick um, you'll see what I mean when I get them done so I'm going to use the belt sander um, it's not strictly necessary to have a belt sander to do this but it certainly makes things easier um, I did plenty of tip overlays before I had a belt sander to use and I just um, I figured out how to you know hold this little piece tight and I'd use um, rasps and files and sandpaper and it was more tedious um, but it can be done um, so you'll have to get creative with it using the tools that you've got but uh, I'm going to show you what I do on the belt sander here Okay, so that was the first step. I've got a good flat gluing surface here. Got a natural taper coming down here. Um, so now I'm going to do the rest of the shaping before I put it on the bow. Um, some people like to just have a big block with a good gluing surface, stick it on the bow, and do all the shaping on the bow. Um, but I've found that I can have a lot more control over the, the shape of the tip. Um, if I get the taper that I want um, before I put it on the bow. And so there's, there's different styles of tip overlays and there's not necessarily any right or wrong answer. I often like to do kind of a, a sharper tip um, and this is the part that's going to fade into the bow. And so if you do it wide like this you can get a real um, even transition um, where you almost can't tell where the, the horn stops and the wood starts. Um, and if you, if you narrow this up so it comes to more of a point, you sacrifice a little bit of that smooth transition, but you can get a kind of a cool, cool shape there. Um, so I just do that by feel and by eye on the, on the belt sander to get the shape that I want. I'm also going to square up these sides to get rid of some of this curve. Um, so just watch what I do and hopefully it'll make sense. So this was the basic shape that I was going for, long and narrow um, and pointy. And this is the area that I want to focus on right now. Um, it's hard to get in there once it's glued onto the bow to shape this up. Um, out here, I can do all that more easily once it's on the bow. Um, so this is about right for what I want it to look like um, when I'm ready to stick it on the bow. Nice clean taper here. Um, coming down to a point both by width and height um, and it can still be blocky out here with a nice flat um, mating surface right here. So I'm going to do the same thing on this other one and I want them to be able to um, match up pretty closely. So up here at the tip they match up just about perfectly one of them's a little longer than the other, but that's okay. I can use this for my top tip, which I tend to make um, a little longer, longer and fancier anyway, and this can be the bottom tip. Um, but this is what I'm shooting for here at the belt sander. Um, next, we're going to switch over to the bow. So here's the bow that I'm working with. Um, this one's a bit of an odd style. It's, it's uh, kind of a molly um, style. That's not going to matter too much for what we're doing. Um, you can apply what I'm showing to, to most types of bows, um, whether it's a recurve or a flat bow or a, a long bow. Um, but what we're interested in right now is out here where the tip is going to be. Um, first thing we want to do is mark um, about how long the overlay is going to be. So I'm going to take a pencil and mark here at the tip. 
Um, and now, there's different ways to approach this, and there's not necessarily a right or wrong, um, as long as you've got enough of a gluing surface to get a good bond, and the, the physics of the string um, is going to be pulling into your, your glue joint, not away from it. And what I mean by that is, um, you could just make this part flat, not really changing the angle and stick this on and it would be just fine. Or you can have this tip overlay angled down more, um, and that's fine too. But what you want to be careful of um, is having too much of an angle and having the, the string out here so it's like pulling the physics of the, the string is pulling the, the tip off of the wood instead of into the wood. But you'd have to go pretty extreme to do that. Um, just something to be mindful of. So on this one, I think I'm going to go a little bit more of an angle than I usually do. Often I have my tip overlays sitting pretty high on top, um, but I think I'm going to um, bring the angle down a little bit more on this one. I think it'll look good. Um, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball what I think would be a good, a good angle for these tip overlays. Something about like that. And now I want to match that um, on the other side. So it comes down about a half an inch from the tip. So I'm just going to measure the same right here. And then draw a line that will match up with the other side here. So those are just guidelines. I'm going to use my judgment when I do this. Um, what's important is that it is not angled off to one side or the other, that it's straight, and that it's flat. So when I remove this wood, here to create a gluing surface for my tip. Um, you can use a belt sander. It's quick, it's easy, um, and it makes a good flat surface if you have a steady hand. Um, you have to be careful. It's also easy to mess up your bow um, if you're not being careful. It's hard to do with recurves, I've found, just because of the angle of the bow and the belt sander. You can also do it with hand tools. Um, so I think I'll do one of these with, um, with a hand tool so you can see what that looks like, and then I'll do the other on the belt sander. So when you're doing these with a, with a hand tool, you want something that's kind of wide and flat. Um, actually, a big old farrier's rasp like this works pretty well um, just because it's so wide and flat, and it's easy for me to get a real consistent cut. What you want to be really careful of is that you're not rocking it back and forth and creating a rounded contour. You're trying to create a flat plane to make a good gluing surface. What I want to be careful of is not to create a lip here. I want to make sure that it's a real smooth transition. Another good tool is this Shinto rasp here. Sometimes I have a little bit more control over the Shinto rasp.
I like to get down and look to see if there's any light gap. Like right now, this is all really good. There's just a little bit of light gap here at the, the back end. So I need to work on it a little bit more. Having a good mating surface is, is really crucial to having a good solid tip overlay. Okay, as you can see, it's pretty time consuming to do it by hand. Um, and you gotta keep at it until you really, truly have a good mating surface or you're gonna regret it. So I've got the bottom tip glued on. I'll show the actual gluing process here for this um, top tip. Um, I'm just gonna mark here where where I want to start the, the taper. I'm going to have this stick off a little bit here on the top limb, um, and you'll see why when I start shaping it up, it'll let the tip extend out further into a point. This is maybe a good time to explain the difference um, between the top tip and the bottom tip when it comes to shaping the overlay or self-knock or whatever. Um, I use the top tip as an opportunity to create something that's long and sleek and pointy and cool looking. On the bottom tip, I keep things kind of rounded and blunt. I don't have anything sticking out past the wood. And that's just because the bottom tip's more likely to come in contact with the ground and I don't want anything to pop off. These don't pop off very easily, um, but if there's something sticking out and it hits a hard floor, like a concrete floor and just the right angle, it might knock the, knock the tip loose. Um, it can be glued back on if that happens, but it's just nice to have the bottom um, less prone to that sort of thing due to its shape. Okay, so I've got my line drawn here. And like I said, I'm gonna show you how to do the, the taper on the, belt sander with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my line here. So when you're doing this on the belt sander, I've got a little bit of recurve here, so I'm going to have to be careful because I don't want to gouge up this spot in here, but I want to use this flat surface here. Um, so I'm just going to be really mindful of where the rest of the bow is so I don't gouge it up with the belt sander. I just want to be creating this angle here. Um, some things to keep in mind, you don't want to be doing it in different spots and different angles. You want to try to get it just like you want it and then just really kind of confidently press down. You want to be really careful that you're not leaning to one side or the other. It's really easy to do. Um, so be checking the sides and making sure that you're doing it um, evenly.
out like that. Hopefully I wasn't sticking my head in the way too much. If I did, I apologize. I was trying to make sure I was getting all my angles just right. So let's get this glued up. So I overshot my angle a little bit trying to get it evened up, um, which is okay. Um, when I clean all this up, um, you're not really going to be able to notice. And if you've got a few rings violated out here at the very end of your bow, um, it's not going to cause a problem. There's very little stress happening out here at the very tips of your bow. So as long as you've got enough meat overall to maintain the stiffness, then that's going to be okay. What's important is that I've got a good mating surface, which I do. Like I said, it's easier and quicker to get that on the belt sander than with hand tools. Um, so to glue, first I'm going to scratch this up just to create a rough surface for the glue to grab onto. I'm going to do the same here where it's going to be coming in contact with the wood. I'm going to use some thick like gel super glue. Be pretty generous with it. Remember I'm having this top tip hang over the edge a little bit on the back. I'm going to clean up the excess glue on the sides, otherwise it'll be harder to get that out of there and make things look nice once it's dry. So it's really important to get this point lined up with the rest of my bow and centered so that it's not off to one side. Um, now's the chance to get it right. So take your time and really eye it up. I'm just gonna use these little clamps here to clamp it down. Make sure they don't change the orientation of the overlay um, and then you'll just let that sit for 15 minutes half an hour until um, the glue is totally cured and then we can move on to the next step of shaping the tips so our next step <clears throat> is going to be shaping this up so like I said my top tip is going to come out to a, a nice point um, a lot of this is aesthetic. Um, you can shape this however you want. You can have whatever shape here you want at the leading edge. It could be round, it could be flat. Um, it could be somewhere in between. Um, the overall tip overlay doesn't have to be this tall. Um, there's a, a couple different ways of, of cutting the stri string grooves in, which I'll show you. Um, if you have a thinner tip overlay, you just use more of the, the sides of the bow to create deeper knocks on the side, as well as across the top, um, almost more like a self knock. Um, if you have a thicker piece like this, we'll be able to just create a groove right over the top of this and not have to do much in the sides here. But I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna start here with this Shinto rasp. And I'm just gonna start um, working, <coughs> excuse me, working on the overall shape of the tip overlay, making sure to keep things even so that I'm not taking off too much on one side. I like to just kind of pick at it um, from different angles and kind of bring it into shape.
now that I've got the sides carved in about where I want them, I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to work on the bottom here. You can see now having it sticking out past the wood, I'm able to contour this so that there's a point coming off that's just the horn past the wood. Now I'm going to work on cleaning up this transition here to make it all flow pretty smoothly. It's really up to you how detailed you want to get um, making this look pretty. I could make this functional just by putting a groove over here and leave it at that. Um, but in my opinion, if you're going to go to the trouble of putting a tip of overlay on there, you might as well take some time and make it look nice. So I've got the, the tip shaped up pretty much like I want it. I might do a little bit more refining, but that's the basic shape that I'm going for. Um, now I need to do the string groove. And so I've got a pretty narrow tip here. It doesn't have a lot of meat on the sides. So I'm going to do the style where I'm just going to be cutting a groove in the horn. I'm not going to be doing much on the sides, so I need to cut it fairly deeply because the string is going to need to sit down inside there and be completely held just by the horn. If you have a, a thinner, flatter tip, you're just going to carve more into the sides. And if you haven't done self knocks before, you can watch my video on self knocks to see how I how I do the the grooves in the side. So I need to pick the right spot. Um, I need to have enough thickness that I can go deep enough, but I don't want to be way out here. Um, so I'm going to shoot for right about there. So I'm just going to take this little rat tail file and gently start my groove. To start with, I'm just going to be going back and forth straight here, but I'm going to start working it because um, the string angle, the loop angle, is going to be coming down this way. So I want to follow that somewhat. So I'm going to kind of work back and forth like this, trying to create a symmetrical shape. helps if you can have a string loop on hand to get a feel for what it's going to look and feel like. So we're on the right track. I'm just going to make it a little bit deeper and try to even this up where it got a little bit lopsided. So I've just got some 
220 grit, this kind of stretchy stuff works well for this because it really contours around everything. It's tough. You can get it down in the string groove, really clean it up. Okay, I've got it all shaped up here. I still have some more work to do on these outer limbs. It looks a little disproportionate right now. The tip overlay seems kind of small compared to how thick it is. It's not going to be quite so thick. I'm still in the tillering process with this bow. Um, but I think these tips are going to look nice on here when it's done. Um, so that's the top tip. I'm going to shape up the bottom tip off camera. And then I'll show show you both of them when I'm when I'm finished, just so you can get a perspective on how they're different. So let me show you what I ended up with. So here's the top tip, nice and sleek and long. Here's the bottom tip, rounded and blunt. The wood and the horn meet right here at the tip so that it's less likely to get knocked loose. Um, so just a couple points um, to bring up that I didn't mention while I was working on these. So as you're cutting down in, you need it deep enough to hold on to the string well. You want to make sure that you're leaving enough um, horn so that it's not too thin. You don't want the, the string to break the horn. Um, it's pretty tough stuff. It doesn't take a whole lot, um, but you do need something there. You don't have to shape them perfectly right away, um, depending on where you are in the tillering process. Um, I'm still pretty early in the tillering process, and I shape these up to the final result for the benefit of the video, but I probably would have left them a little chunkier um, and less refined um, just so I could carry on with the tillering um, and not have to worry about quite so delicate tips um, early on in the tillering process and then I'd shape them up later. So you always have that choice. You can even put tip overlays on a bow that's already finished. So remember, this is just one material and one style that you can use. Um, there's quite a few other materials out there and other styles of tip overlays, I encourage you to look around at pictures and um, explore, figure out what works best for you. Um, this is a style that that I've been using a lot um, with these narrow um, tips and I like the way it looks, but um, certainly not the only way to do it. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, good luck on your projects and take care. Thanks.